Hello and welcome to a new video. I'm Elif and on this channel I talk about marketing, career and productivity to help you succeed in the first years of your career. And in this video we're talking about marketing reporting, yes again because Tracking your marketing performance and reporting on it is just as important, if not more, than having a brilliant strategy and execution. After all, how do you improve your activities and show ROI if you're not tracking your numbers? According to a HubSpot report, the average marketer spends one third of their time during a typical work week on repetitive tasks. That's about 16 hours out of 45, which is assumed by the article because a typical marketer usually doesn't work for 40, but works for 45 hours. Hours. So that makes 16 hours in total per week on repetitive tasks and on average 3.55 out of those 16 is spent on collecting, organizing, managing and reporting data from different sources. And depending on the type of company and the role that you have, this number can significantly go up and I've seen this firsthand when I was working in marketing agencies and was managing accounts for multiple clients at once and when every client has a different custom request, your reporting time increases significantly. With this in mind, marketers need systems and solutions that make their lives easier and solve this problem. So here, insert Wattagraph. Wattagraph is a marketing analytics and social media reporting tool that helps digital marketing agencies and businesses save time by enabling them to create visually aesthetic and easy to understand reports to present their data, to present the analytics for clients and internally. And at this point, you might have already guessed, but this video is kindly sponsored by Watagraph. Thank you so much to the Watagraph team. They've asked me to test out the tool and create an honest review about their platform, which is exactly what you'll find in the video. So without further ado, let's switch to my screen and I'll start doing a screen share so I can take you through the tool, the reports that you can create and the benefits it offers. Okay, we all know that screen recording time means glasses on. All right, so right now we're looking at Watergraph's homepage and if you want to get an idea of the overall capabilities of the tool, then I suggest you start here. Once you open your Watergraph dashboard, you're able to start creating reports right here. Either you can use a template gallery, which you know by now that is always my first go-to option. I usually want to start with a template gallery so I get inspired of the reports that people have created previously or the Watergraph team has created previously for the user. So that's one thing that you can start off with. You can also see your folders, which I haven't created any, I haven't needed to yet. And then you can see the list of your reports on your main dashboard. So there aren't that many setting options to kind of confuse you at the first instance. So again, you can also start creating the reports here, create from template, use smart builder. So basically the same functionality of this first section of the page. The other main setting that you see on your dashboard is managing your sources. So so you actually don't necessarily have to select your sources or manage your sources before you start creating your reports because what I've noticed as I started to use it was if I first go into the template gallery, choose a report format and then say I want to use it, I don't necessarily have to have those sources connected previously. I can just directly connect them once I get into the report. So that piece is pretty easy and straightforward but if you want to do your source management which is basically where Watergraph will draw drive the information, drive your metrics and import them into the reports that you create here. So let's take a look at the integration options that the tool provides us. As I scroll down, you'll notice that most of them are very much social media focused. So you're gonna see organic ads separately, you even see TikTok, which is not a platform that I see very often in marketing analytics reports. You also see Snapchat, which is also interesting because I haven't seen that very often either. And then a couple more. And then I believe there's also a custom API section as well. So if there's something that you don't see within the integration list, you can always go for the custom API, which is something I usually try to avoid personally. It's just that I'm not very good at it. So you can connect it with all the integrations that you see over here. If you don't see something, you can connect with their team, double check if they are in the progress of working on it, or maybe you can do it with a custom API. So these are the ones that I've connected so far 
for the purpose of this video and for the purpose of this testing. One thing that I'd like to comment on is the LinkedIn piece. So when it comes to LinkedIn, what I would have loved to see is that I would be able to connect my personal LinkedIn page rather than the company page. However, I do know that in most reporting tools similar to Wattagraph, you're usually able to connect your company pages, but not the personal page itself. So I guess that's just the negative thing that I find with reporting tools. I would have loved to see a connection with the personal pages just because I find that, I mean, in this year, personal LinkedIn pages are much more relevant. And that is what most businesses are actually more actively using and leveraging these days instead of the company pages, which are mostly used to share company news or job postings or major milestones that the company has achieved. But the personal LinkedIn pages I find are much more relevant these days and businesses are using them for thought leadership purposes and they're kind of moving the activity to their team's personal pages rather than company pages. So I know that's a long winded comment, but I find that that is very important important and relevant in this day. So those are the integrations that I've connected so far. Let's first take a look at the YouTube channel traffic report, which I actually very much like because it's not a format or it's not a report type that I have previously looked at in this way. So it looks at my website traffic that is coming from YouTube specifically, as well as showing some YouTube specific analytics as well that I might like to take a look at. Even as is, I did like the report. I do like seeing the sessions created from YouTube URLs was pretty relevant, pretty important to see. Seeing the YouTube to session funnel, this was also an interesting one that I've never looked at or calculated before. So I did like that one as well. You can change the date range right here right now we're looking at this year 2021 from start of January 1st we can also do a comparison with last year as well so let's just go for it and take a look at the numbers in that way as well this is also pretty important and pretty interesting to see in my opinion see this graph tells me a lot about how my YouTube channel has been doing to create website traffic for me since last year there's been a significant change and I'm kind of seeing a slight upward trend too so that's amazing. I also want to show you is that you can edit the report. So this is coming from the template, as I told you before, and there are many other widgets that I could add if I find this insufficient or if I wanted to change something, I can do all of that here and I can just kind of drag and drop the widgets that I think are important for me. I can also do a report setting. So if I wanted to do port rate or landscape, I choose that here. I can do custom branding. I can play around with the colors. Right now, it's just the pre-made template because that's not necessarily what I'm really focused on with this video, but you can do all those different changes and customizations, which could be important if you're working with your clients that have custom requests. If you want to customize your reports with their branding, those features come very handy in my opinion. So next thing I want to show you is right here. If you click on more, I can send the report link to anyone. I can create it and use it in an email format or in a document format, but I can also automate the report which is something very, very useful if you want to kind of take off that manual labor off your shoulders. And instead of sending something manually, needing to remember that you need to send out a report on that certain hour of that certain day of the week, instead, you can just select the frequency, the delivery day, the time zone, whatever, and then you just start entering the email addresses that will be receiving this automated report, which I think is a very, very handy feature. Next thing I want to show you is actually the template gallery itself. So let's take a look at the different options of templates that we can use. There's currently 72 templates that we can use that have been created by the Watergraph team. If none of those fit your needs, then you can obviously create something from scratch. But I think the templates is always a very good place to start. And I'm actually going to take a look at them in much detail later on as well and start creating more and more reports for my business. One thing that you'll notice as I'm scrolling down the template options is that the tool is very much social media focused. I'm not saying it's only social media focused, but there is a heavy focus on social media reporting. So if that is an area that you want help with, if that's an area 
that you're spending a lot of time in your marketing, I think this is going to be a very good solution for you. You can also filter the templates by integration. So you can take a look at which sources you've already connected or which sources of data are important to you. And you can filter the templates by selecting that integration specifically. Or the other thing that you can do is you can filter by report type, which I also like because these are a little more focused on the use case, which is something that I am particularly interested in when it comes to reporting tools. So I did like the social traffic one, for example, because this is usually a custom report that I focus on and I need to create for certain purposes. So I do like this kind of use case perspective. So this brings me to something that I wanted to talk about in this video. And that is that before I started to experiment with the platform, I received an email from the Watergraph team. It's an automated email, not a personal email for me, but it was introducing a new report format, a template that they've created, but the email approaches it from a use case perspective, which is one of the key things that I criticize about the tools that I test and use. It's not that they don't have enough features. Usually tools have a lot of features, but they don't necessarily know how to communicate it well. So the thing is they don't approach it from a use case perspective. And here's what I mean. What exactly will be the user's pain point that they will come burning to you to ask for that certain feature or look for that future or use that report. Sometimes us users don't know why or which part of that technology solves our challenge. Let me talk over this email so that my example is more specific and the point is more clear. So I received this email and I love it. And I mean, I don't love everything about the email, like the subject line. I don't know if I'd pay attention if I wasn't particularly interested in learning more about how I can use Watergraph. But here's why I love the email. It covers my problems. I don't care about how pretty the dashboard may look like or how many amazing features it may have. I, as the user, care that it will help me solve my challenge as a marketer in an agency, tracking and reporting KPIs for multiple clients, because that's my pain point as the user. My pain is that I have to track my performance internally and create client-facing reports, which makes at least two formats for every client. Imagine the load when I manage five clients. Well, I remember very clearly the times when that was the thing I was doing. And let me tell you, it wasn't fun. All right, now let's wrap up with the things that I liked about using Watergraph. Number one, integrating our data sources was very easy, very straightforward, just as I showed in the beginning of the screen recording. Number two is that it approaches the templates and the reporting from a customer pain point or use case perspective. Now, the things that I didn't like or that I think could be improved, number one is that LinkedIn company page versus LinkedIn personal page option. I would have definitely loved to have LinkedIn personal pages there. Number two is that when the templates open up, they open up with the sample data in it, but you don't necessarily realize it because there is no kind of pop-up or message saying that it actually does not use your own data, but it uses the sample data. So I would have assumed or preferred that as soon as I select a report from the template gallery, I would have preferred to have my own data sources already integrated in that report because truth be told that was my expectation as the user so if i've already connected my data sources that are used in that report and if i've already selected a report from the template gallery that i know i want to use then i shouldn't need to change the data sources from sample data to my actual data and finally the advantages that i see in using such a tool number one it saves you a lot of time in terms of reporting it saves you a lot of mistakes or a lot of missed deadlines as well because because once you automate your reports, the data is just real time updated right there. And you don't necessarily have to go in and play with the numbers. You don't have to do any calculations. You don't have to create different formatted documents, like taking something from Google Sheets, putting it into an email, putting it into a PowerPoint and stuff like that. You can just automate the report, enter the email addresses, customize it and start sending it automatically. So that saves you a lot of mistakes. The other advantage is that it provides visibility into your analytics. Once you have those reports ready, they're waiting for you. All you have to do is check on it and figure out how to optimize the marketing performance. And the other advantage that I see is being able to connect different data sources and bringing them into one report format or one dashboard, as well as giving you ideas and inspiration on what types of reports you could be creating using those different data sources, which I think is also another good feature. All right, that's a wrap. If you're interested in checking out the tool for yourself, then they have a seven 
seven day free trial and I will leave a link in the description box and the comment section below. If you have any questions about the product, then leave them in the comment section below. Or if you have any experience with using Watergraph or any other analytics tools, again, leave a comment down below so we can continue this conversation there. As usual, thanks so much for being here, watching this video till the very end. Hopefully you're still here. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, please don't forget to smash the like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video. Take care guys. Bye-bye.